Welcome to the Diligent Minds Podcast, where you get practical steps to help you become the best version of yourself and achieve your goals. I'm your host, Dorian Jones. Let's get into it. What's going on, Diligent Minds community? How y'all feeling today? I am back with another episode of the Diligent Minds Podcast, where I make personal development easy so that you can achieve your goals, do all the things you put your mind to, and so much more. If you like the sounds of that and you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and share it with a friend and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. I wasn't able to record over the weekend to get Monday's episode out. I was like, I got to drop something this week. We can't skip this week. We got to get to y'all something so that you can have a great week so that you can continue bettering yourself. In today's episode, we're going to talk about pride because I was thinking about myself. I was like, dang, how many times have my pride held me back? How many opportunities that it may have robbed me of? So I was like, I'm going to make an episode about that because I know that so many people let their pride get in the way and it blocks you from so many blessings. And we're going to dive into that today. Before we dive into that, I want to talk about a couple things that I did over the weekend. I did some work with my plants. I had to repot a couple of them. I had to put a couple of them up on uh, moss poles, which actually, you know what? I'm thinking about making a separate YouTube channel just for my plants because I have so much knowledge and people ask me about my plants all the time. I was like, I might as well go ahead and create a, a channel for that specifically because sometimes I try to intertwine it with the personal development and I'm like, I don't want to seem like I'm all over the place. So I may create a separate youtube channel for my plants which i'll if i do i'll let you know down the line and you'll get to see it so you can learn about the plant care plant tips and everything that i do with my plants and i make recommendations and do different things like that because plants recently have become a big part of my life they're relaxing it helps me just kind of get in tune with myself when i'm having a bad day or when i just need to relax or just de-stress a little bit i go and i mess with my plants and it just really relaxes me i don't know If that developed over the years of me collecting the plants, but it's really something that helped me relax a lot. And I really enjoy that. Uh, What else did I do over the weekend? I did a lot of cleaning. I typically clean often, but I really cleaned up a lot. I really moved my couch. I moved out my TV stand and I really swept and mopped and all that stuff under there. It wasn't much to clean since I cleaned so often, but it was cool. Just putting on some chill music, relaxing a little bit, pouring some wine and just taking my time to really clean thoroughly couple, you know, little things that you don't clean that often, but they need to be clean, like dusting all my blinds and getting all the dust off, stuff like that. I was just chilling, relaxing, had that sage burning. I burn a lot of sage. I don't really burn too much. Um, not sage. I was about, I burned Palo Santo. I'm sorry about that because it's more relaxing and more of a subtle scent. So I went ahead and did that as I was cleaning, had that wine going to music. So we just cleaning. And after I did that, went ahead and set in the tub. I don't know about you, but for me, when I sit in the tub, it's really relaxing. I just sit there, cover my eyes. I meditate. I just turn the lights off and I just really allow my mind to decompress and just and just not think about anything and just be in full relaxation mode. So that's something I like to do for myself as part of my self-care routine. So that's what I did over the weekend. And um, I was thinking about different segments of the show, like what's something else that I can add into the show to make it more interesting, like maybe a game or survey or something. I don't know. I've been thinking about that for a while because it's hard for me to come up with something since I'm a solo podcaster. I know sometimes I think about doing more guests, but at times is I'm like the quality of guests that I want to get. I want to start to continue to level up. I want to continue to get people that you know and that you've heard of. So that way it's more intriguing to you because I know some of you ask like, hey, why don't you get this person? Why don't you get that person? So that's something I've been working on and thinking about bringing back is bringing back like more guests, but people that you know. So that may be something that come down the line. I'm not 100% sure yet, but it's just something I wanted to add. And uh, on top of that, I want to ask you, what's something that you've done for yourself recently? When I was just thinking about my self-care things, when I thought about things that I enjoy, what's something that you've done for yourself or what's some things that you enjoy that you've taken time out to uh, to uh, just really do intentionally? Just take time and say, this day is just for me. I'm going to just do something I really enjoy. When's the last time that you've done that for yourself? If it's been a while, I want to ask you to schedule some time. Find some time to really do something that you enjoy without the kids, without any distractions or any of that stuff you have going on. Separate from your daily routine and just go do something that you really enjoy. All right, that's enough for that. We're diving into today's daily tip. I want to tell you that it's okay not to be okay. And if you're not feeling okay, Acknowledge your emotions, feel, and do not neglect those emotions that you're feeling. 
They are valid. I don't care where they're coming from, how you feeling. There's a reason they're there. Observe and pay attention to that and just allow yourself to sit in it. Allow yourself to sit in it and absorb it. Do not neglect neglect these things because many times when we're not feeling well, when we're not in the best head space, we tend to neglect, <laughs> we tend to neglect how we're feeling. We tend to neglect these feelings because they're not desirable. It's not something that we enjoy, but they are all valid and they're part of your growth. They're part of you as a person and they're going to help you grow as an individual. That's it for today's daily tip. Now we dive into today's episode. Pride. What about it? Pride is a good thing, but having excessive pride is the problem. Don't make the mistake of measuring your pride based on your accomplishments or your possessions. And many times I know as a man, our pride stops us from receiving a lot of blessings. I'll be the first to admit that I've allowed my pride to take over multiple times in the past. And it's been times recently, too. I won't front up. It's times where I'm still a work in progress. I don't have it all figured out. I'm not a perfect individual. And I didn't want others to feel like like they beat me or that they won an argument, even though it was the mature thing to do. I allow my pride to get in the way like, nah, I have to get the last word and I have to say something when in reality, I could have just dropped it and let it go. And I've been afraid to ask for help before, too, because I didn't want anyone to see my weakness or to think that I wasn't wasn't capable or that I needed somebody. I always want to feel like I got this, like, don't even worry about it. I'm not going to say anything. And the most mature thing to do, the grown thing to do is to let your pride down and allow others in to help you and to allow others to pour themselves into you in a way if they if that's something that's going to help you. And for me, the list goes on. In recent years, after being honest and doing the work on myself, I've been more conscious of the times where my pride has taken over. So now I'm conscious of that and I try not to do it as much. I don't really do it too much anymore. I've allowed myself to let that guard down, but I still keep it up in cautious situations, but I am more aware of when my pride is taking over. Recognize that pride can be both positive and negative. It's not always a bad thing. Pride can be a double-edged sword. While it can boost your self-esteem and motivate you to strive for excellence and just to be great, it can also hinder you and your growth. It limits your potential if it becomes excessive or misplaced. Being aware of this helps you understand when your pride is constructive or when it's destructive, when it's going to tear you down and when it's going to build you up. Learning self-control can help you be honest with yourself and determine if you're being prideful. Learning how to control your emotions is one of the best things you can do for yourself. That's one of the most mature things. It's one of the most, um, what's the word I'm looking for? More advanced things that you can do as your own like individual, as your own growth, as you go through your process Learning how to control your emotions is one of those skills that's the most important. We typically respond to things with our emotions and think about it afterwards. You think about how many times have you got mad or frustrated with something? You just respond instantly. You're not sitting there thinking about it. You're not sitting in your thoughts and say, is this worth me responding to or is it that bad? How many times have you done that? It's more times than not for me. I'm not even about to front. I'm going to tell you it's many times where I just responded instantly. I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead and respond right away because that's my emotions taking over. But many times, even after that response, I sit and I think about like, dang, it wasn't even that bad. It didn't even need that type of response from me. So that's the thing I'm talking about, having that self-control. Developing self-awareness is crucial in understanding how your pride may be influencing your thoughts, your emotions and your behaviors. Reflect on your actions and your motivations. Be honest with yourself about any patterns or behavior that may be fueling your pride right now. What things are fueling your pride and why? Where is this coming from? This can help you identify situations where your pride might be holding you back. And it's more situations than not. Think about a recent decision that you've made that you may have made due to your pride. How could you have handled it a little bit better? Would there have been better outcomes? Learning how to read your own temperature and be honest with yourself is powerful. You can stop and check yourself before you make that decision based on your pride or temporary feelings. Just like I mentioned before, how I just made those decisions instantly. But when I sit back and think about it, I'm like, it didn't even need that. When I was younger, I had a short fuse and I would respond to things in that same moment. You think about when you as a kid, when you're going through things, when you're frustrated. And a lot of it comes from trauma and, and just our past experiences, which we won't dive into right now. It comes from all that. It comes from all our past experiences. And as I observe my life right now and I think about it, 
I become a lot more self-aware and I'm more calm. I observe and I respond accordingly. I don't always feel like I need to respond to everything. Many times I sit and ask myself if it's worth the energy that I'm about to pour into it. And it saves me a lot of stress and headaches. As you think about about your responses that you give to things, as you think about how aware you are of your own emotions and your responses to the things that happen in your life, do you feel like you have a control over that stuff? Do you feel like you have a lot of room for improvement or you feel like you already a work in progress and you and you're being intentional about not responding to everything that's presented to you, not responding to everything that challenges you. And as you develop this self-awareness, as you develop this, this skill, you're going to notice a huge difference in your life. And when you develop this, your pride is going to go away naturally because you understand that it's not always about how you respond to things or what you're responding to, but why? Why are you responding to this? Is it even worth your time and energy? In reality, humility is something that you can't avoid. When you embrace this, you recognize that you are not perfect and that you had a strengths and weaknesses just like everybody else. It's always something that you're going to be bad at. It's always going to be something that you're good at. And that's the same with everyone else. So don't expect yourself to be perfect. Be open to feedback and criticism. Be willing to admit when you're wrong or when you need help. Embrace that humility. Embracing this humility allows you to learn from others, expand your knowledge and just grow as a person overall. It allows you to grow as that as that person of like in a place where you just know you don't know everything. When you feel like you just know it all or feel like I don't want to feel like a failure, I don't want to embarrass myself, then you're going to stunt your growth a lot. Embarrassment is something that we dread as humans. I feel like we don't do a lot of the things because we're scared to embarrass ourselves, especially in front of people who know us. So you think about when you go out of town, when you go like out the country where you're away from people who know you the most, then that's when you're the most daring. You will do a lot of things that you wouldn't do in front of family members. You will do a lot of things you wouldn't do in front of friends because you're like, man, these people are not about to see me again. I can go do whatever. Like, let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let's go ahead and try this. That's because of that embarrassment. You're like, man, if I get embarrassed right here. I could hold my head down. I could go and I probably won't ever see these people again in my life. Sometimes that embarrassment when we around other people that we know, it can follow us our whole lives. Just the thought of that can paralyze us. It stops us from doing so many things. When people bring up those old stories, talking about stuff you did in the past or things that was embarrassing and just those those moments that you wanted to let go. But people keep bringing up you like, just drop it. Leave it alone. That was so far in the past. That was so long ago. That was the old me. You know what you said. You know embarrassing things you've been through. Just embrace all those things. That's a part of your journey. That's a part of your life. And it's going to help you grow. And it's going to help you let go of your pride. Don't be afraid to be humiliated in front of people. As long as it's not too bad. You know, certain things too extreme. You're not going to go to too far to the extremes. You can kind of understand what I'm saying. But don't allow the idea of not being perfect in the moment. Stop you from any type of growth or stop you from from um, taking yourself so serious. Don't do that. Just relax. Let it off your shoulders and embrace humility because it comes with life. It comes with the growth of us as an individual. Pride can sometimes lead to us set unrealistic expectations for yourself, which can set you up for failure and disappointment. You need to learn how to set realistic goals. Be mindful of your goals and make sure that they are realistic, achievable and align with your abilities and the resources that you have currently. Avoid comparing yourself to others and focus on your own progress and growth. How many times have you or someone you know tried to do more than they can handle so that they can look better in the eyes of others? When you do this, this is your pride speaking and you not being honest with yourself and focusing on you and where you are currently. Don't set yourself up and set goals that are unrealistic. I've done this multiple times in the past. I set huge goals to try and make myself look like I was doing more than I was, and it looked bad on me. It looked bad on me in the long term because I'm continuing to try to go after this huge goal that I know I'm not ready for just so I could look like I'm doing better than what I am. And then it just made me look stupid in the end. Instead, I should have just focused on what I could control at the moment and what was within my reach, not worrying about looking good in the eyes of others, focusing on the successful days, which turn into successful weeks, months, and years. Don't allow your pride to set you up for failure by reaching too high up the tree when you haven't even planted the seed and allowed it to grow yet. Remember, plant those seeds, set realistic goals, 
Let those goals accumulate into each other. Set sequential goals. Get to first base first, second, third, and then you get to home base. Don't try to just go straight to home. It doesn't work like that. It's a slow build and it's a slow grind. Embrace it. Love the process. And don't allow your pride to set those goals that are out of your reach right now because you're going to set yourself back and slow your process down. And this is one of my favorite things to talk about. If you know me, you follow me on social media, you've listened to a lot of my old stuff, a growth mindset, helping people develop a growth mindset. That's kind of where I started at. And when you adopt the growth mindset, which is the belief that you can learn, improve and develop over time, then you setting yourself up for long term success. You learn to embrace challenges as opportunities for growth and view your failures as valuable lessons rather than personal setbacks. A growth mindset encourages you to take risks, learn from mistakes, and continuously strive to be a better version of yourself. Going from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset is the foundation for all growth in your life. You learn to embrace change. You learn to embrace all those things that's changing in your life. Instead of seeing unfortunate situations as just that, you view them as an opportunity to learn. This is a great life skill that will serve you at any stage of your life. It took me a while to develop a growth mindset. I'd always find excuses for unfortunate events in my life. I blame everyone else instead of looking within. The moment I began to hold myself accountable, I saw that I was able to better control my response to things that happened to me. I began to find the lessons and see how I can grow from every situation. In order to develop a growth mindset, I'm going to give you seven tips to help you do so to help you just kind of get on track with with slowly developing that growth mindset. And you have to do these things over and over and over. You can't do these things one time and then it's just going to appear. It does not work like that. You have to apply yourself all the time. And the first thing you want to do to develop a growth mindset is observe where you are and where you like to go mentally. Know exactly where you are. Know your starting point, but also know your finishing line. Know how far you want to go. Know where you want to take yourself. The second thing you want to do is find inspiration. Find someone who's done it already. Find somebody who has a blueprint. Who's someone that have the mindset that you like to adopt? Find somebody that's that's doing great things that you admire. You like what they're doing. You like what what the growth they've had. And just kind of pay attention to, to their journey. Pay attention to where they were and how they grew over time. The third thing you'll do change your relationship with failure. And I should have said this one first, because a lot of times we face failure and we feel like that's the end of it. No, this is an opportunity to learn. This is an opportunity to start over with more knowledge, with more vision, with the different route and a different way to apply yourself to your goals, to where you want to go. The fourth thing, know your limits and test those limits. Don't allow yourself to stop at where you are right now. Don't base your actions on your current abilities. Always test yourself, push yourself to the limits, and then that's how you're going to stretch yourself out. Just like when you're stretching those muscles in the beginning, it was hard for you to reach down to your toes. Now you can get all the way down and you can put your palm on on the ground now. That's because you kept testing your limits. Do the same with yourself. Whatever, Whatever limits you have right now, continue to test those things. And that's how you're going to continue to develop that mind. You're going to continue to flex those muscles. The fifth thing you want to do, focus on becoming better every single day. Win every day. Focus on the wins that you have on a daily basis. Be honest with yourself when it comes to your areas of improvement. Be intentional about making change in your life. How is that change going to benefit you? And be intentional and dedicate yourself to just making that change all the time. Number six, don't give value to others' opinions of you. Don't let what other people say about you or the chatter that you hear behind your back stop you or distract you or discourage you in any type of way. Because you're going to hear, you're going to hear people saying all those things or they think they better, they changing, they want to they want to do things different or they think they better than somebody. You're going to hear all that stuff. Don't allow their opinions to change how you look at yourself and the track that you're on for you. And the final one, intentions matter. What is the why behind your actions? Why are you doing this? Why do you want to develop a growth mindset? What's the bigger vision? Keep that in mind. Keep all seven of these in mind, actually. And then you're going to start to develop a growth mindset and show up every single day and keep applying these things in your life. A huge driver for our pride is perfectionism. We want to appear perfect. 
Pride can sometimes fuel this, which can be paralyzing and hold you back from taking action. Accept that you are human and that making mistakes is a part of the learning process. Embrace imperfection, learn from your mistakes, and focus on the progress rather than perfection. If you're waiting for the perfect time, you'll be waiting forever. We all in life trying to figure it out. We all out here just trying to do our best to our own current abilities. You'll learn along your journey and adjust as you learn and just continue to move forward. Put one foot in front of the other. Don't worry about being perfect. Just focus on being a better you. Focus on being better than you were the day before. Focus on how you can have um, like yourself feel better today than you did yesterday. And you're going to have some days where you skip where it won't be a good day. And that's perfectly fine. Embrace those things. Be patient with yourself and be courteous to yourself. Allow yourself to embrace all these failures and allow yourself to embrace all these things that's not going right in your life and understand that that's a part of your journey. That's a part of your testament. We all in life trying to figure it out. We doing the best to our current abilities and to what we know right now, because as you continue to move forward, as you continue to try things, you're going to learn new things and you're going to make better and different decisions based on what you know right now and not on what you used to know. You'll learn along your journey and just adjust along the way. And as you learn more, you're going to adjust your approach to life. You're going to adjust your uh, your capabilities. You're going to adjust the, the way that you view things as well. Don't worry about being perfect. Just focus on being a better you every single day. That's the important thing. Focus on being better today than you were yesterday. Embracing all the things that you didn't like about yourself in the past and learning how to graduate from that. And that's how you're going to let go of that perfectionism. And as you think about your pride, I want you to remember that it's okay to be proud of your accomplishments and have a healthy level of self-esteem and self-confidence. However, when pride becomes excessive or prevents you from growing and learning, it's important to recognize it and take steps to overcome it. By practicing self-awareness, humility, setting these realistic goals, developing that growth mindset and just letting go of perfectionism overall. You can avoid letting your pride hold you back and continue to thrive personally and professionally and at any level or any stage you want in your life. So remember that you are in control of yourself. You are in control of your destiny. So go out there and embrace that. Accept that you're a work in progress. Remember to kick pride and perfectionism to the curve because they will not benefit you and they're just going to hold you back. That wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to check out the links down in the show notes. Reach out to me on IG. Uh, You can send me an email as well. DiligentMindsPod at gmail.com. If you want to say hello or tell me how you'd like the show, refer to a friend, leave a rating and review. I truly appreciate you all. You hear the outro rolling in. You know what that means. Everybody has greatness within. Even you.